been wanting to do a video on this article right here for a while and uh, finally getting around to it and uh, it's very important uh, an introduction to fifth generation warfare welcome to it you are in it if you're online um, well, even if you're not online but let's uh, go down through this thing here I'm not going to bother reading that you can go to the article I'll put the link to it in the description box down below how I learned to stop worrying and love fifth generation warfare 5GW we type these words traveling through the Swiss Alps on high-speed rail as the world becomes smaller we at the radio research group have witnessed firsthand how nearly everything we knew about modern conflict is changing under the shadow of fifth generation warfare the incredible in exponential accelerating pace of technology has overturned centuries of standard operating procedure military term there standard operating procedure military website diplomats and military leaders alike have been thrust into uncharted domains disrupted by an invisible enemy that makes us question our reality now you can make that out what you want but if you really get into the spiritual thing there um, I think the invisible enemy that makes us question our reality would actually be a good way of them saying the Lord um, but that's not I know they would say oh that's not what we meant yeah well ultimately it's a bunch of atheists that are basically trying to take down everything that God's created so but anyhow let's continue darkness descends upon us as a tunnel envelops our train terrestrial GSM goes dark satellite tra tracking loses sync we entered the Gothard base tunnel the longest tunnel in the world our world is evolving so quickly that classical frameworks of thought around modern war warfare have become irrelevant our GSM modern uh, our modem connects to a cell tower deep within the tunnel we reconnect to the world deep underground at the speed of light pre-existing notions believed to be impossible beforehand have now become commonplace or if you just read Bible prophecy you'd understand that this stuff has been prophesied but uh, not many people in the military do that our train exits the tunnel sunlight envelops the train as GPS returns back online incredible mountains open up all around us as we enter an incredible new world what is 5GW William, William Lynn's generations of warfare model goes something like this first generation battle you love how they do this generation thing you have different generations of Glock handguns different generations of um, internet technology and all the other stuff you know all this generation stuff like generations of iPhones and whatever else weird uh, first generation ancient melee battle with musket made irrelevant by muskets in other words you can't go fighting with swords and whatever else muskets will take you down before you can get to the guy with the <laughs> weapon second generation organized battle with gunpowder made irrelevant by blitzkrieg Let's create being a very fast lightning type of um, attack. Third generation warfare, mechanized warfare focused on speed and maneuverability, uh, made irrelevant by terrorism, whatever that is. Uh, fourth generation decentralized warfare is led by state actors, primarily kinetic. You're going to see this term kinetic quite a bit. That means physical warfare. Um, the mobile internet network effects made irrelevant by that. Um, fifth generation information perception primarily non-kinetic uh, TBD there um, <coughs> in other words fifth generation warfare is on the internet it's social media the concept of fifth generation warfare itself is controversial with Lind arguing against it saying that fourth generation warfare had yet to fully materialize uh, we argue that what is happening in modern conflict today is so radically different from the fourth generation framework that it's time to enter the fifth generation we were so convinced that we had to write the Wikipedia article on it ourselves despite it now being heavily redacted many of the key elements we have added here our favorite definition of fifth generation warfare is featured in Abbott's handbook of 5GW 2010 stating that the very nature of fifth generation warfare is that it is difficult to define um, besides the fact that defining a subject based on it being difficult to define is counterintuitive, Abbott adds that 5GW is a war of information and perception. Again, a war for your mind. We're going to get in there. And, I mean, you, 
when you look at all of the stuff that's going on with all of the different reports and misinformation, disinformation, all the different things, it just gets mind-boggling. Kind of like warfare. <laughs> kind of like being on a battlefield and you have all the bombs going off and artillery and airplanes going over and the tanks and there's some big battleship out at sea shooting and, you know, it's very confusing. The confusion of warfare. Well, it's kind of like the internet. You know, it's very hard to find good preaching online. Um, 5GW is a war of information and perception. We at Radio Research have evolved the definition stating that fifth generation warfare is defined by data driven, non kinetic military action designed to take advantage of existing cognitive biases and create new cognitive biases. Or as Abbott and Rees Herring described, the del deliberate manipulation of an observer's context in order to achieve a desired outcome. Fifth generation warfare technologies have advanced to the point that when applied correctly, their very use has been concealed. As we will describe further below in the attribution problem, in many cases simply understanding who is behind a 5GW attack is impossible. Yeah. This means that a fifth generation warfare conflict can be fought and won without a single bullet being fired or even most of the population knowing that a war is taking place, which is going on right now. Um, completely. I was actually watching a thing in um, Russia. This guy was talking about the Russian border towns are being attacked by Ukraine. Well, I didn't even know that that was going on. And he was there showing it. Um, so Russia is attacking Ukraine, but Ukraine is attacking Russia. And a lot of the people in the area are saying it's, you know, the reason that this war is taking so long is because America is doing a lot of the fighting. You know, we're fighting America. So the Third World War has already begun. It's been going on for a while now. And the average person in America does not even think that that's happening. Another example would be the um, recession. You know, two consecutive quarters of negative growth to, uh, gross domestic product means you're in a recession. We had that in 2022, and yet the media is just saying, no, it's not a recession right now. We're not in a recession. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, they don't even know what's going on, in other words. The following technologies and techniques are often associated with 5GW. What's important to note is that these technologies may be used to heavily influence or completely remove the need for kinetic combat, which I don't completely agree with that, but we'll get back to that. Misinformation, data-driven, deep fakes, cyber attacks, honeypots, social engineering, social media manipulation, they wouldn't do that, decentralized and highly non-attributable psychological warfare memes fake news in other words um, psychological warfare mass surveillance open source intelligence commercially available social media analytics <laughs> YouTube open source and gray market data sets commercially available satellite slash SA imagery commercially available electromagnetic intelligence cryptographic backdoors electronic warfare with the rapid reduction in cost and availability thereof Open source encryption, DeFi community technology, lost low cost radios, SDRs, quantum computers, unclear if being used yet at scale. Um, weird stuff. Abbott finished his description of 5GW quite elegantly, quoting Clark's third law quote, Any sufficiently advanced uh, technology is indistinguishable, indistinguishable from magic, if I can say it correctly. A little cold in here, so my mouth doesn't always work that great. Um, in summary, 5GW is a war of information and perception. Um, when, you, when you think about, when you read the book of Revelation and how the whole world is worshipping the Antichrist, worshipping the beast, and he's changing laws and times and all this other stuff, uh, yeah, it will be a war of information and perception. Targets existing cognitive uh, Biases of individuals and organizations creates new cognitive biases. Social engineering it is different from classical warfare for the following reasons. Focuses on the individual observer, decision maker, is difficult or impossible to attribute. Nature of the attack is concealed. <laughs> I mean, if you have any doubt that this isn't going on right now, well, I don't know how to help you. I mean, it's definitely going on. It's just crazy. Below we will describe where current frameworks for warfare begin to unravel and what we can do next. 
origins. The origins of 5GW is mentioned before are hotly contested as data-driven warfare combined with propaganda date back at least to the end of World War II. Some of the best work in the space happened around this time. Um, for our analysis, we focus on how network mobile computing and big data analytics are being used to drive decision making on a societal scale. They're tracking everything you do online. While the handbook of 5GW alludes to early examples, the book was published before one of the most disruptive societal events had happened since 9-11. It goes down through there. Um, <clears throat> Precursors to 5GW, the first accidental fifth generation conflict. The Arab Spring represents a key turning point in warfare emerging in Tunisia in 2008 and erupting across North Africa in 2010. The Arab Spring was the first conflict to be driven by social media, primarily Facebook and Twitter. Huh. We had witnessed firsthand that a revolution or protest would show up first in the data, then on BBC a few hours later. The conflict was manifesting itself online and generating tremendous amounts of data before any kinetic action would take place. The Arab Spring lacks a few key elements of the fifth generation warfare, most notably the ambiguity of the opposing force. Despite having some ambiguity as to who was fueling it, an interesting side note is that one of the main organi organizers of the Egyptian revolution, however you say that name there, worked at Google at the time. Huh, that's interesting. From our interactions with people involved during those early years of mostly privatized data collection, the use of social media to cascade into a regional conflict was almost entirely accidental. Because of that, we would like to, or we like to call the Arab Spring the first accidental fifth generation conflict. And of course, again, you can see this thing of uh, people do these flash bomb things and whatever else, and they'll organize it on social media first before they go do it. So it's absolutely there being done today. Um, you know, 2010 there is what they're saying, I guess, you know, um, so here we are, you know, 13 years later. The societal echoes of the Arab Spring continued to bounce around the planet, focusing a few years later on Hong Kong and Taiwan during democratic pro protests in 2014. At this point, we begin to see a new technology beginning to emerge, decentralized technologies for zero or zero trust systems for those of you who work in more conservative organizations like the DOD, Department of Defense, in other words. During the September 2014 Hong Kong protests, encrypted messages, messaging apps were used heavily. When local cellular infrastructure was overloaded, protesters employed a decentralized mesh networking app called FireChat, completely bypassing great firewall restrictions. Governments were so disturbed by the event, Russia began deploying its own electronic warfare units to protests. I wouldn't go near some of these protests. I think you're crazy if you go near them. Decentralized currencies like Bitcoin began to see popular use, for example, during Occupy Wall Street 2011. While decentralized warfare is a key element of the 4GW definition, the coming ambiguity of attackers and the use of big data and media as a weapon reinforcing one another takes us into new realms. Uh, fitting a fifth generation warfare puzzle piece into a fourth generation playing field. While warfare has a long history of psychological operations and propaganda, which is true, it does, um, conflict going online has accel accelerated psychological warfare, reducing the feedback loops to milliseconds. Facebook, in other words, they, feedback loops, what they're saying there is they do some kind of a thing to scare people, and then they look and they see, did it work? Okay, um, they had, it during Vietnam, I forget what the operation, something ghost or... I can't remember what it was, but they actually were broadcasting the sounds of, you know, dead relatives saying stop fighting and whatever else out in, into the villages of the Vietnamese people, hoping to make the Viet Cong, you know, give themselves up or whatever else. Um, it's really creepy. You can actually listen to the recordings of it on YouTube. You can look it up. And um, but see, they had to wait for that feedback loop to come back in. Now you don't have to wait very long on social media. Facebook product teams have a word for this, dopamine loops. It, the pleasure, you know, things in your in your brain, basically the what's created in your in your mind um, to make you feel pleasure, and Facebook calls that a dopamine loop. To see, you know, how people like something, it goes viral. Everybody's liking it, whatever else. 
In the world of big tech, you can build, test, deploy in a matter of minutes. Military advertising and political strategists are beginning to think about how they can leverage a over 100 years of teachings in psychological warfare and combine this knowledge with data-driven psychological feedback loops to influence behavior. Brethren, I'm online. I get it. I do video ministry. Fine. But I specifically stay away from uh, trying to get people here to watch this ministry. I don't want to be entertaining and whatever else to get you really hooked into the internet. You have to get away from the computer. Okay. You just, I'm not saying permanently or whatever. I'm just saying unplug sometimes. Don't be so dependent on your computer and on the internet that you just can't spend a day without it. Okay. That's very dangerous. And that's why I, another huge reason why I'm against cell phones, you'll see some more reasons coming up, but having the internet with you all the time, they're using it. They want to influence your behavior. Better think about that. We call this the social engine. Facebook, sorry, Meta calls it business as usual. Yeah, the creation of data-driven cognitive biases has already defined the past decade. Everything from swinging elections to determining a Netflix script or which celebrity will be in an advertisement for makeup. In fact, we used GPT-3, an AI algorithm, to write the italicized section of this paragraph. GPT-3 is a predictive text entry program which allows people to type words on their keyboard by predicting keys that are likely to be typed. This allows us to influence cognitive biases by sneaking certain ideas into people's text. Uh, bypassing their critical thought processes altogether. People will then re replicate these messages in their own texts, and the spread of the content will be a reflection of the user's natural cognitive biases. Um, another thing that you should get into the habit of doing if you are online is be careful that you are not losing your writing skills, okay, or your spelling skills. I oftentimes, I will, if I have a, some search to do on YouTube or Google or whatever else I want to use, I'll type out the whole world without even look the whole word, excuse me, without even looking at the screen. Because I want to make sure that I can maintain my ability to spell. Okay. I write handwritten notes. Um, here's my sermon notes coming up for the next one I'm going to be doing. I write them by hand. I don't want to be on the computer all the time. Uh, do not lose those cognitive skills. And so what they're saying there is when you, the computer is con constantly, uh, it's now going to be able to try to read your thoughts and see where you're going with it. And if you're submitting to that and saying, oh, that makes it so much easier for me. It's so much easier to use the Internet now. Uh, that's a problem. That's a problem. We can slow this stuff down. That's our whole point of us being here yet as the body of Christ. The Lord could catch us up and say, okay, just let the whole world fall apart. We are supposed to hinder. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's written about the body of Christ. We are supposed to hinder the Antichrist system from coming in. So something just as simple as type out the words. Don't just be constantly doing the auto finish thing and whatever else. You know, let's slow the system down. These capabilities are unseen in traditional warfare and did not do not fit well into the 4GW framework. One of the main areas where fourth generation warfare begins to break down is the ambiguity of the attacking force, in particular the cyber attribution problem. This is related to the fact that software engineers are actively hiding or misconstruing their identity while writing lines of code. In some cases, hackers are even using modified cyber weapons leaked from NSA servers. Eternal Blue 2017. In a fifth generation of cyber war, simply knowing where, who your enemy is can be nearly impossible. Yes. Again, you have to be careful online. The attribution problem. The cyber attribution problem has highlighted the problems of traditional warfare, as almost all modern military doctrine requires knowing the identity of your enemy. This is where modern conflict begins to get outright frightening. Governments have routinely stated that cyber attacks can and will be responded to with kinetic force. In other words, they'll send a SWAT team or something kinetic force. They're going in with guns. In the 2018 edition of the U.S. Department of Defense Nuclear Posture Review, the U.S. government states that they they reserve the right to respond to non-nuclear strategic attacks with the employment of nuclear weapons. 
The fatal flaw of nuclear deterrence is that it does not apply only to nuclear weapons. The United States would only consider the employment of nuclear weapons in extreme circumstances to defend the vital interests of the United States, its allies, and partners. Extreme circumstances could include significant non-nuclear strategic attacks. Let's see where this is going. The Nuclear Posture Review itself mentions cyber 16 times, considering some of the largest cyber attacks in history uh, were started by teenagers. A little spelling issue there. Um, uh, and that goes into the thing there. Um, the impact of the cyber attribution problem on modern nuclear deterrent theory is quite literally insane. We used to be able to get into a room with an enemy. Now they're just floating in the ether. Uh, speaking to Bond and no time to die, whatever. A new era begins. The birth of fifth generation warfare. Social media in its essence, along with most of the internet today, is driven by for-profit cognitive programming, also known as advertising. <laughs> so the real thing is called for-profit cognitive programming. Oh, no, it's just advertising. Ads, along with the exp exponentially growing set of advertising data gener generated by billions of people have now been weaponized. The amount of data that can be collected on an individual is increasing exponentially. We argue that the first compelling case of fifth generation warfare was the 2016 U.S. presidential election. This includes complete ambiguity of the opposing force, wide-scale societal engineering using data, see Cambridge Analytica, organized counter counterattacks between government and social media companies, censorship, and the direct attack on the decision-making process of billions of people. We encourage you to read the leaked inter internal Facebook report detailing precisely how this is taking place from the perspective of a computer scientist. It's fascinating and very scary. Stop the steel and patriot party, uh, the growth of mitigation of an adversarial harmful movement. <coughs> Unfortunately, the 2016 presidential election gets too political for most readers as their own cognitive biases prevent the creation of a subjective fifth generation warfare framework. We may update this section in the future and continue our story of 5GW with something far less controversial. Israel, May 2021, Operation Guardian of the Walls. Now here, there's an interesting thing. And uh, I'm going to probably... And when I get down through this section here, you can read the rest of it yourself. But this is what I wanted to get to. The Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, are masters of information warfare. Hmm. Israel even has their own propaganda division of the military, the IDF uh, spokesperson unit. They have a pretty cool logo representing the propagation of radio waves. Um, uh, America has their own propaganda as well, okay, from the Pentagon. But that's another story. The first 5GW conflict to evolve into a kinetic battle, excluding the storming of the U.S. Capitol a few months before, took place during the 2021 Israeli or Israel-Palestine Palestine conflict. On May 13, 2021, the IDF announced falsely on Twitter and on the record to the Wall Street Journal, the IDF air and ground troops are currently attacking in the Gaza Strip. The IDF has, had announced that an Israeli invasion of Gaza had begun. The New York Times then reported the following day that the announcement had been a deception, that no Israeli troops had stepped foot into Gaza. Um, IDF further clarified the statement, declaring that the intent of the announcement was to expose opposing Hamas forces, presumably using unmanned ISR, and destroy tunnel networks with precision-guided munitions. Okay, now here's the important part. Precision-guided munitions. They wanted to destroy tunnel networks, and Hamas forces with those. And how would they do that? Katz and Bo Bobot, however you say that, describe separately in their book, Weapon Wizards 2017, how IMSI catchers and cellular network analysis hmm, were used to previously identify and destroy Hamas tunnels. If an IMSI teleports from one place to another, it's a tunnel. A single fighter, likely many, forgetting to turn off their cellular transmitters after the news reports may have resulted in massive heavy bombing attacks. 
There is so much data in our corner of the universe that the absence of data can um, even provide information. And that's where I'm going to stop, okay, because that's where I wanted to get to in this thing. And you can read the rest of it. There's a lot of really crazy stuff here going on. But <coughs> do you understand what they're saying by cellular transmitter? It's your cell phone. These guys were walking around. They had their cellular cellular transmitter in their back pocket. And they got hit with precision guided munitions. I've warned about these things. You know, and still a lot of people make fun of me. Oh, you know, you're so weird. You're so backward. You don't have a cell phone. Um, and you couldn't pay me to have one of those things. It's a cellular transmitter. It can listen to you. It can give coordinates as to where you are exactly. It's absolutely crazy. Um, well, I have to have a cellular, you know, cell phone for my job or whatever. Okay, then don't take it with you when you're in private. You know, when you're not at work or something like that. Or some, just get away from those things. I mean, people lived for thousands of years without cell phones. I lived most of my life without a cell phone in terms of they weren't even available when I was a boy growing up and as a teenager and whatever else. We got along, we got along just fine. Uh, what if you have a vehicle, you know, breakdown or whatever? You walk <laughs> or somebody stops and helps you. Uh, period. Um... So, but whatever, just another little piece of evidence, but I will put the link to this uh, really wild art article here down in the description box. Um, you know, we already made copies of it and everything else. So if it, if it uh, goes bye-bye after this video comes out, that's happened many times before. Um, but just wanted to bring this thing out. It's just a really crazy to read this whole thing um, so <clears throat> understand what's going on with the internet with this ministry in reality um, <clears throat> they are shadow banning this ministry I've had all my views pretty much now deleted off of rumble um, which makes absolutely no sense to me hundreds of thousands of views on rumble and I don't know, I might have even been approaching a million views on Rumble, but they're just gone. Um, you know, that's why we have to take this warfare to a different level. Um, share the videos. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. I hate to even say that. I've never cared about people subscribing to the channel. Well, please subscribe and whatever. I'm not monetized. That's not the point. If you don't help this ministry to get known, they're just going to bury this ministry. So... There are levels of warfare that we can do um, <clears throat> to, to undo what they're trying to do, to shut down a legitimate ministry like mine. Um, and, of course, the most important thing that you can do is pray for us. Pray for me, uh, specifically. I mean, for my wife and son as well, but I'm saying pray for this ministry. That's very important. So I'm going to be doing some sermons coming up. Uh, but I just, I've been wanting to get this article um, done, have a thing on this. Again, like I said, if you want to read the whole thing, it's in the description box below until they take it down or make it private or something like that. So that is going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please be careful what you do online. <laughs>